Garrett, um, the last few decades have been an absolute astonishment in the quality of cosmological research. Uh, cosmology has gone from metaphysics and a philosophy basically to a precision science, which is uh, truly remarkable. Uh, you're working in it. Uh, I, I'd like to project forward uh, d decades, a century. How do you see the field progressing, considering so much progress has been made in such a short time? Well, I must admit, I, I have two viewpoints on how cosmology could proceed. There's a somewhat pessimistic viewpoint and an optimistic viewpoint. As you said, we've entered this era of precision cosmology, and to some, they feel like the, the big questions have now been answered. We know roughly that the universe is 30% matter, 70% dark energy. And maybe the particle physicists will tell us what dark matter is, and the, you know, somebody in the future will work out what dark energy is. But what really what we're left with then in cosmology is essentially just basically beating down the error bars and you know, getting our parameters more and more precise. Um, that, that is a very, I think that's a pessimistic approach to cosmology. The, the optimistic approach that I have is that uh, while our cosmological model works well, it doesn't work perfectly. It works on the large scale, but it seems like there are some issues going on in the small scale universe which point to something not quite expected going on. So, you know, we, we see with the population of dwarf galaxies around a big galaxy like our own, yeah. the properties just don't naturally match our theoretical expectations. So they might be telling us that our, our overall view that dark matter and dark energy are these particular things may not be as simple as people um, put forward. Well, what is an expectation uh, in terms of this cannibalism with uh, large galaxies and small dwarf galaxies or satellite galaxies or clouds around them? What's the expectation? What's the reality? And what, what could be hidden there? So the, na the naive expectation when people first simulated individual galaxies is that we should be surrounded by thousands of dwarf galaxies, potential oh. food for the future. We go out there and count them, we find tens. So this question of the missing dwarf population has basically uh, dogged cosmology for about a decade now. Some people feel that maybe there's a natural solution in baryonic physics. Gas physics in the early universe is complicated and maybe uh, these early dwarf galaxies, they lost their gas through a big supernova explosion, one of the first stars they produced. So we don't have uh, these dwarf galaxies, They're really there's a few galaxies that we see and the rest are empty, empty shells. Yeah, yeah. Others have suggested that maybe dark matter is not cold dark matter. So this is like sub-relativistic speeds. That in fact, it's warm dark matter, which moves mildly relativistic speeds in the early universe, which wipes out small-scale structure. And that would basically remove some of, these, some of the expected dwarf galaxies. If that's the case, that's already telling us is that our simple expectation of what dark matter is, is possibly not correct. And that leads to you know, potentially exciting directions which we could go in. And that's your optimistic view. That's my optimistic view. I, think, I don't think a scientist's job is to sit there squeezing down the error bars. It's asking, you know, what's more? What's, what more can I find out about what's going on here? And there are lots of indications coming from particle physics that there, there could potentially be a lot more things going on in terms of dark matter physics and interactions with dark matter and normal matter. And we haven't even got onto the topic of what happens with dark energy. Yeah, what's really exciting is that just by studying the largest structures in reality, galaxies and galactic clusters, we're getting hints of what the very smallest structure is in terms of the quantum fields and forces and, and particles. There, there's been a, a big shift actually in the field of particle physics into not just solely using colliders, but now using the universe as the, the key to what's going on in the small scale. You can't get a bigger collider than that. Absolutely, and it used to be, of course, the focus was the early universe because that was, no, that, that of course is the right. most energetic time uh -huh. there's ever been. But again, what's going on in dwarf galaxies? Is dark matter interacting? And in fact, you know, we have a lot of people uh, um, focusing on trying to find these direct interactions here on Earth as well. Hmm. So there are lots of clues come from particle physics, we, but we don't know specifically which rabbit hole to go down okay. yet. The, the, the plate is open. So my hope is that we will have more clues, will point to an exciting future for cosmology.